I want to show you how you can take advantage of a security hole and bypass the Windows logons and how you can reset your password without any software. But I have a few warnings before I do. First, is that it worked for me? And so you're responsible if you proceed to do as I'm doing to reset your password of anything that doesn't go right. And especially if you don't do as I do because we're going to be dealing with parts of the computer's programming and so let's stay away from some of those things and not freeze up our computer or destroy it. Second of all, if any of your items are encrypted, you'll permanently lose access to all those files. And so you may want to pay for software or some services to get what you need and not do this. Which brings up a third point. I read about somebody who didn't know they had encrypted files by the previous coworker, and so when they reset the password, they lost all the files. So if you're not sure, then do some homework, and to help you get an idea about encryption or some basics, you can watch my Windows training video on Windows BitLocker Drive Encryption. So the first thing we want to do is get Windows into a repair mode because in that repair mode I'm going to show you the loophole that will give us access to the computer to change a few things and one of those things that you want to change is this button right here, the ease of access. That when you click on it, and it's for those who have disabilities, where they can check they want to hear the text on screen read aloud or they want the items on the screen larger. What we're going to do is change that from the ease of access to the command window. And so that next time when we boot the computer and click on that button, it'll open up the command window and allow me to type in a command that will give me access to reset the user's password. And again, to do that, we want to put the windows into repair mode. And you can do that one of a few ways. One is by booting from the original Windows 7 disk by putting that into your DVD drive. And when you restart the computer, over on the left hand side, you'll have the repair option. But if you don't have Windows 7 or the Windows 7 disk, then what I do is when I restart my computer, about halfway through the boot up process, I press and hold down the power button. I don't just press it, I hold it down until the computer does a force shutdown, which is about three to five seconds of holding that power button down. And also I've read somebody who had a laptop, they pulled out the battery about halfway through the boot up and then put the battery back in and restarted the laptop and were able to get the repair option. And so to restart the computer from the Windows login screen, let's click on the arrow and click Restart. Okay, right where it says Starting Windows, I'm going to press and hold down the power button until it turns black or it does a force shutdown. Well, there you go, right there. And then I'm going to hit the power button to restart my computer. Now because we did a force shutdown in the middle of it booting up, it thinks that something's wrong, so it's going to give us the option after we restart it, the startup repair option. And it's right there. You can see the, the one that's highlighted, launch startup repair recommended. And so with the highlighted or selected, all you have to do is hit the enter key on the keyboard to start up in the repair mode. And that's all fuzzy. Let's just go ahead and jump ahead so you don't have to go and wait through all that while it's booting up. Okay, in this uh, screen right here, the startup repair, that may take several minutes. So let's go ahead and jump ahead of that so you don't have to wait through all that and suffer with me. And you get to this point eventually. And it says, do you want to go ahead and do a system restore? No, we don't want to do that. Go ahead and click cancel. And then it may take several more minutes. We'll go ahead and jump ahead again. And there it is. Down at the bottom where it says view problem details, go ahead and click on that button to expand it. And then go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of that. And we have that last link down at the bottom with the extension .txt. That extension or that link with that extension to that file that when you click on it, it's going to open up the notepad. And that's important because through Notepad, we're going to get access to our computer. We don't care about the file. With Notepad open, let's just come over here and click on the File menu and go down to Open. And hey, we got access now, enough to do some damage. What we want to do is go ahead and select Computer and then click on the Open button. And then I've got five drives. You want to choose the drive that has your Windows operating system installed on it. Typically, it's the C drive. But mine's not the C drive, mine's the E drive. And so go ahead and double click on that to open it up. And in that drive, we're looking for the Windows folder. Double click on that. And then everything's sorted alphabetically, so you want to scroll down to the S's and we want to find the folder called System32. When you find it, go ahead and double click on it. 
and then it's only looking for folders and all those files that have the extension .txt from txt to all files. Give it a second so it can pull up well just a gazillion of those files here with all those different extensions and we want to scroll down it's sorted alphabetically and find what's called utilman and there it is right there utilman that's the file that when you click on that button on the login window screen well we want to rename it first go ahead and right click on it and left click on rename and I type in one after it just give it a new name but not so different that I don't recognize it when I want to reset it but that utilman when you click on it it's that button in the login screen that opens up the disabilities window there in any case now it does nothing because we changed the name of it because it was pointing to that file that had utilman and we want to point it to a utilman file but not that one remember we want it when we click on it to open up the command window so next let's go ahead and scroll up it's sorted alphabetically to the C's to find the file CMD for command and there it is you want to go ahead and make a copy of that by right clicking on it and going down and left clicking on the copy and then after you do that you want to right click anywhere and go down and left click on paste and there we go, we got a copy of the command file. So next, we want to rename that by right clicking on it, left clicking on rename, and we want to go ahead and call that, rename it, utilman. So you see what we're doing? It's going to look for utilman, and utilman is going to be the command window. And then that's it. Just go ahead and close out of everything. Close, close, close. And or you close or click finish. Restart the computer. Here we go, Windows log on screen. Let's go ahead and test it by clicking on it. Instead of opening up the disabilities, when we click, it opens up the command window. Awesome. Now we just have to type in a command that will give us access to reset the user passwords. And so what you want to type in is control control space user passwords two. So two separate words, control, space, user, passwords, two. And then go ahead and hit the enter key on the keyboard. And hey, whoa, what's this? It's all the users on this computer. I got all these fancy users, many users. And then all you have to do is go ahead and choose the one that you want to reset the password for. I'll do the last one. It's that one over here. It's the last one in the list, so I'll go ahead and select that one, click on Reset Password, and you can type in a password, but if you leave it blank and click Okie Dokie, it has no password. Close out of the command window, just click on it, and it will log me in. Oh, isn't that fun? Okay, so once you've got that all squared away, and let's say you want to go ahead and revert everything back to the way it was, not the password, we're talking about the files that we renamed to utilman1. We want that back to be utilman, so when you click on that ease of access button, it opens up the disabilities window and not the command window. In any case, to go ahead and put that all back to the way it was, well, you want to watch my Windows Trusted Installer training video. And Trusted Installer is all one word. And the reason why is because it's going to take extra steps. And I want to hit two birds with one stone because there are other people who just want to learn how to delete, rename, or edit files and folders that's owned by the trusted installer. And so I'll show you how to do that if you want to watch that video, how to reset everything back to the way it was. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.